Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. Our board gauge, our board game bag room, bag coat, coat check, I don't even know, I'm all over the place. Whatever we want to call it, it's an unboxing video. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better, even when I can't get my words out correctly. Uh, normally we're answering your gaming game night questions tonight. That question is, what's in the box? We are going to take a look at CO2 Second Chance by Vital Lacerda. Uh, this is the Kickstarter copy, which actually I've got a pile of stuff here that's Kickstarter exclusives. We're going to take a look at those first. Then we're going to look at what's in this box. Yes, I realize this is an older game. Came out in 2018, Kickstarter in 2017. There was a mess with uh, my pledge, not because of the company... I got in on a bulk pledge with a bunch of people from Edmonton and the guy was supposed to come back for whatever. It doesn't matter. It took me forever to get this. Um, so I am just finally getting a chance to check it out now. So again, I'm Mo Tuzno, Tabletop Bellhop. Find me all over the internet, Tabletop Bellhop, one word. At the end of the video, I'll have some more information on what you can find and what we do. But what I know you care about, what I care about right now is what's in this box. So the first thing I'm going to do is just flip this around. Uh, you can find the back of the box online everywhere, but I'll let you know the information that's on here. Uh, it does say it's Vital Lacerda's Game of Environmental Crisis Returns. CO2 Second Chance. Each player manages an energy company that responds to government requests for new clean power plants. The goal of the players is stopping the increase of pollution while meeting the demand of sus for sustainable energy. You'll need enough expertise, money, and resources to build green power plants. Energy summits will promote global awareness while allowing companies to share a little of their expertise and learn more from societies. If the pollution is not stopped, it will be game over for all of us. So what's really cool about this is I have the original CO2 and I love it. It's one of my favorite games. Well, this includes cooperative and competitive game modes. And interestingly, the co-op is the base. So that's quite a change from the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip things down. But I do want to point something out because this is worth noting. Now, I said my game took a while to get here. Like, the cover on the box is starting to split. Now, this isn't rubbed anywhere. I haven't played this game. It's just like, it's like the the paint layer, the, the coating they put on here to put this graphic on is starting to split right along this seam. Now, again, I haven't had this for a long time. There hasn't been undue stress on this box. That's just a little disappointing. It's something to do with the manufacturing process, how they put that on, how they mounted the graphic. Uh, if you're a collector, that's going to bum you out. Personally, I don't care. I want to play the game. As long as the box will hold all the components without it falling apart, I'm happy. But I wanted to point that out. I don't know if this is a problem on multiple issues, if other people have seen this. But on my copy, I do have a bit of splitting on here. So what I've got here is some of the Kickstarter exclusives. So this was stuff that, based on the backer level and add-ons we bought. And again, I was in on a bulk project. One of the most impressive things here is this money. I was impressed by this online. I'm impressed by it now. This looks like real money. The weights are different on the different coins, the color is different, and so is the size. So you actually have pennies that look like copper pennies. I don't, there's probably not pennies in here. Um, they are worth one. Next we have fives, which again, they're not nickels, but they actually say CO2 on them. What's interesting too is there's actually different, it's not just a scaled down. So I don't think you're going to be able to get this on the camera very well. You can see the building there and a one on the other side. Uh, there we go. And then the five has a completely different, and it's one of the different power sources from the game on it. And a five on the back. And then we have tens. I assume, yep, tens with wind power. So it's what it is, is all the clean energy sources. But like these are coins, like these are real coins. Like you, you, someone could confuse these for real money, I think pretty easily. And then what do we have here? Twos, okay, twos. I probably skipped the twos. This alone, I don't, I don't know how much this add-on level is. Like this is some of the nicest money I've ever seen in a game. Now it does say CO2 right on it. So because of that theming, I don't know if you'd want to get these and put it in a different game. I don't see why not. I'd be really tempted, except the denominations don't get high enough to toss these into a game like Power Grid. Um, but you would need multiples of them. Power Grid goes up to a lot more money. So we are going to toss these coins aside. 
I'm just trying to, I shouldn't have taken one out of each bag. I should have just, they did all come individually bagged with one big bag to put them in, which is nice. I realize that's just packaging for shipping, but it also works good for storage. All right, next, I got this sealed thing with a whole bunch of stuff in it. One of the punch boards has already come apart, which to me is actually a good thing. It means it's um, well cut, so it's gonna come apart easy. We got a few different things in here. So we got a little baggie, we'll get back to that. We got some cards and we got some punch boards. Uh, you can see one of these is already sliding off. I know these overlay on the board to uh, replace the spots on the board as they are. So there are, I'm not gonna pull this out because it's just gonna fall apart. There's two of these, two different sets. Um, oh, you know what, it came out. So these are overlays that came with the Kickstarter that replace some of the stuff that's on the main board. I There are rules for these included in here. So this adds replayability to the game. I'm just gonna toss those right back in. Nice thick, like that's a nice thick card. I think you can see that pretty good. Not super thick, but nice and thick. I'm trying to remember what game it was I unboxed recently that just had super thick cards. It was really impressive. All right. You know, if I get the instructions, I'll probably know what all this stuff is and I can talk better to it. Even though I've read the instructions, I forget. So uh, the new rules, the Kickstarter rules, kind of tiny text, but it's nice and color coded. So you have a whole a bunch of different little things here listing what you have. So huge coal plant tile. That's what one of these is. Um, you've got the Antarctic tile. You've got, oh, so there's a bunch of different little expansions. So the, the huge coal plant tile tells you what to do. Then there's 3D components. So it's 3D upgrades, which we'll grab those right here. These are actually pretty nice. They, they have a 3D printed kind of feel to them. So you've got a dam, um, one of the like stock market symbol. <coughs> a barrel, a uh, nuclear plant, and a small purple, another tracking plant. So those just replace cardboard components that are in the base game. Always a cool upgrade. What else we got here? We have one global event tile. So there's a global event tile. We have six project randomizer tiles. That's the the red things here we saw here. We have the Arctic expansion, which includes cards for the Arctic and a new Arctic location. Uh, lobbyist cards, those will be in here. We'll open that up in a second and so on. Just a bunch of really cool, like some of it, it's not just component upgrades, which is kind of nice. Though I always feel kind of bad about Kickstarter exclusives too, but it's nothing you need to play the base game. It's all upgrades and things that make the base game look better, feel better, maybe add a couple variants to play. All right, we're gonna open up these cards. They're interestingly packaged. Here we go. Cards, they're exactly what you'd expect from the other cards. So these are the lobbyist cards. You have one for each of the countries. Solid, match the art style, new symbols on the back. And then, of course, the new Arctic cards to go in with the base game once you use the Arctic. So that's all the Kickstarter stuff. All stuff I'm very happy to have. This was a Kickstarter I definitely... I, well, I haven't played yet, so I guess I can't say too much, but I don't think I'm going to regret. I like the original game. You can basically play the original game with a couple little rule tweaks and some upgraded components, and that enough is probably worth it. The co-op game sounds interesting to me. I'm not a huge co-op game fan. I did think it was odd that the co-op's now the default and the playing for points is a variant. So yeah, nice Kickstarter bonuses. Let's get to the stuff that everyone can get in the retail pledge. And I gotta say, there's something else I like. Um, points to GeoChicks for separating that, that the Kickstarter stuff was completely separate. All right, so we have the rule book on top. So no, this wasn't in shrink. So yeah, I should probably point that out here. I'm gonna put this back on. The game ships like this. There's so many punch boards that it doesn't actually, the box lid doesn't fit. But once we punch everything, that should fit. The rules are on top, the rules are huge. This is an intimidating book. And I gotta admit, it's a somewhat intimidating game. Fatal Asserta is not um, a light, fluffy game designer. His stuff tends to be heavy. Um, event games that take a long time to play and take a while to learn. Um, so I have read this rule book, which is why it's open. We start off with a list of components. 
really impressive rule book, lots of examples, color-coded sections. Um, one of the better rule books I've actually read, though it is heavy. Now note there are two plays to play in here. So basically you're looking at two rule books at once. It starts off with the co-op rules and then gets into how to change them when playing non-cooperative. But you can just see the number of examples, color-coded symbols, the iconography. For as heavy a game this is, it, things are very clear and very clearly explained. And we are still going. So at this point, we've ended. So you are looking at 18 pages of rules. Now that does include the, the component list for the base game. Another thing that's interesting to note is they do also include a bunch of actual facts about real life climate change and what governments are doing about it, which I thought was a nice touch. Like if you're gonna have a game with a theme, dive into the theme as much as you can. So then we get into the variant rules for competitive play. It's a little bit thinner, but it's mainly because it, all it describes is how to play differently. Now I will admit, Having read both, I would have liked two separate books. I would have liked the competitive playbook and a cooperative playbook with the rules repeated. I know other people probably feel the other way. So if you look, the, the, they're already done. Now I'm just looking into rule reference. And then we have the solitaire rules, which is something else I know a lot of people are excited about. Not for me, I don't play a lot of solitaire board games. If I'm gonna play solitaire, I tend to boot up something digital. And we have an ad at the back. Total rule book size though, 26 pages. It, it's intimidating. It really is. That, that's a thick book that's going to scare some people away. There are plenty of Watch It Played videos out there, though lots of other ways you can get the information. So we're going to see if I can unfold this, because this is a significant board, though not huge. There we go. Not too bad. I'm off camera a bit. So we're going to have to zoom up a bit just so you can see the size of this is not a small board not a small board at all it is two-sided so you have one side for the cooperative mode and one side is for the competitive mode um you've got all your different technology levels you're leveling up on the projects you're trying to complete the power plans that all the governments you'd have to know the game to really know what all this means uh those overlays would go over into these sections i will flip it so it doesn't look all that different so if you don't know what you're looking for um, this is the co-op side where you're going to have your things you need to complete every turn or else you lose points. I don't know this side myself well. But I dig the overall look. Uh, it's a very clear board, well looking busy all at once, which is kind of an interesting mix. Uh, a lot of the stuff here, though, is just going to get covered up. So like you see a lot of art here, but you're going to have power plants and stuff on top of this and they're going to pop. So though this part of the board looks a little muddy, once you put the tiles on top, you're going to really see the tiles. This is one, two, three, four folds, completely square boards. I uh, uh, slightly rectangular, almost square boards. It is slightly rectangular. Like I said it's a significant. That's a chunky board. Like look at how thick that is for those of you watching. All right, then we move on to, and I thought these were really neat when I saw them in the rule book. So these are the player aids, and what's neat about these is I don't know where the player boards are in here but you put them beside your player board and they explain the actions to the side of them. So you would put this beside your board and this section would apply to that part of your board. And then if you play the game a bunch of times, you don't need them, you just don't use them, which I thought was kind of neat. It's a neat touch, it's an interesting way to do it. And there's one for each side of the board. So this would be the other side of the board. So you have these two and you would have your player board in the middle. I'm gonna keep two of those out for when I get to it. Here we got a bunch of power plants. We got evil ones that cause pollution. We got the new ones that you can propose projects on. Um, nice, not super thick, but nice card. And here is one of the player boards. So I'm gonna punch that. Came off nice, that was nice. Uh, so it's worth noting the money's in here because the Kickstarter is an upgrade. So I do get the cardboard money as well. So here's an example of the yellow player board. And then you would have this on this side, explaining what those actions are. And you would have this on this side, explaining what those actions are. Which like I said, I thought that was a nice touch. And then once you know the game well enough, you don't use these anymore. Fair. I dig it. Lots of little tokens, lots of bits. This is uh, a cardboard heavy game and a heavy cardboard game. Uh, these are gonna go in the middle. And like I said, you're gonna cover up a lot of that stuff in the middle 
with these boards that show different energy types. Those are for the summits. Here's a board that I don't need much of because I have the, the money. So it is worth noting the money is all different sized even for um, when you get the non-metal coins. And then we get to the box insert with look at everything already bagged. Wow, that's a nice touch. Now again, I realize it's, it's wooden components so it's for shipping purposes, but everything in here is already bagged. That, that's kind of cool. Um, I'll probably just keep the same bags. Everyone has its own little test desiccant package, a little thing that tells you not to eat it. Pro tip, if you live anywhere where it's humid, where your basement's humid, keep these. Keep them with your board games. Keep them in the boxes. They will protect you from mold. So we're going to pull out some of these wood components. We've got the various power plants here. So if you look, it's a bunch of trees. It's kind of cool looking. That's going to overlay on top of one of these power plants things down here let's see it was the first board let's see if i can punch one of these here we go so the way these work is you have your tree power plant with its costs and then these sit on top of them which compared to the base game is a huge improvement like it's just a much cooler 3d look it's a much more impressive look it's much more clear it's easier to see across from the board so we have the the green and i'm just going to toss that in loose so I'm just going to pull out one of each of these. We have a different type of plant. Nice thick wood components. Nice color coded. Easy to see. Here's your oil derricks, I think, or the, the pumps. We'll stick with power plants. Wow, the wind one's like super tall, which fits because wind turbines are super tall. Nice, thick, chunky components. So far, very impressed by everything I've seen. Um, I don't know what that's trying to show me. It's probably where some of the cardboard pieces go. There's some interestingly shaped things. One of the things I find a lot of these games lack, and this may be one of them, is showing me where everything goes in the insert. Um, so pentagonal, pentagons, little pentagonal pieces in the four player colors. From what I understand, these player colors are um, have been tested for colorblind friendliness. I don't personally have that problem, so I couldn't tell you. We got some nice chunky wooden blocks in different colors. I think these are to mark like the year, stuff like that. They're all different sizes. I'm just gonna grab all of these and kind of hold them all up to the camera. Really nice, these are actually varnished. You can tell they're glossy. A Couple of them been dyed. One's actually bare wood. Sorry, this one's not as glossy, but no, that's coated too. Really nice solid components. Like you're, this is a step above your real Grande Mayfair wood here. Uh, more things in the player colors. This time we're looking at um, the other ones were hexagon pentagons. These would be hexagons. I'm not going to be other pulling one out. We have hexagons. Then we have meeple. We'll pull out a meeple. They don't look quite. They're not meeple meeple. They're little scientist meeple. I think they're supposed to have a clipboard. Little person holding a clipboard. In the player colors, I don't know if red showed up that well. Let's grab a different color. Here's yellow, maybe you can see that a little better. Then we got cubes, literally cubes. Again, I'm not gonna pull these out. They're little tiny, they're resource cubes. They're the cubes you've seen in every Euro game that's ever been produced in the player colors. Similarly, we have discs. Again, I'm not going to bother pulling these out. These aren't a unique enough component that I think I need to show them off. You can see them well enough here. And then we have white cubes, which obviously represent something different than the player color cubes. Um, they are the same size. Thought they might be a different size. Now this is another type of power plant. I think this is your hydro. Looks like water. Might not be though. It has been a while since I read the rule book. Then we got a couple more bags. Oh, I did do that wrong. Sorry. So, sorry. This is the part that shows you Oda power plant. So, wait. This slides in here. And then the power plant goes on top. Yes. Sorry. I had done that wrong earlier. So, these are the parts that show that you've started a project. So if I had started this green project, you would buy the green project, you would slide this over top, and then you would build the power plant on top of it. 
So it's actually even cooler. It's more 3D than I was showing. So here, that shows a green power plant owned by Red. It's not just on the cardboard piece. That's my bad for not playing, reading the rules for a while. So yeah, th there's a whole bunch of those in player color to show who owns what plants. We're almost there, almost there. We have the caps. These are a huge part of the game. Uh, represent the cap and trade system that the governments have put into place to penalize people for um, punishing or for polluting and reward them for building green plants. Uh, these are purple discs. Lots and lots of purple discs. These are a significant size, almost, I uh, know, about quarter size. And there is one red one that shows the current market price of the caps on the main board. This was a huge part of the original game, huge part of this game. Uh, taking advantage of the cap market is a big part of the game. And then we have a drawstring bag. Uh, that was something that wasn't needed in the original game, but there's a bunch of chits you have to randomize, and the easiest way to randomize chits is pull them out of a bag. Uh, this is cloth. It's not felt. There's no CO2 logo. I've seen better, but you know what? It's functional. It's nice and deep. Lastly, we have cards and more cards. We have cards and Hobbit cards. We're going to move this aside. I'll never get that out. They have the um, quick open tab somewhere. Of course, I can't actually see where, so we're going to skip that, and I'm just going to use a hobby knife to get this open. Like, I appreciate those quick open tabs, but only when you can actually find the spot to do the quick opening. Two, three. Four. Victory Epitaph. So I don't know what these are. I think this is um, for solo play. Oh no, it's, it's the number of UN cards to set up based on the number of players. Goal cards for different areas. Symbols on the corner, how much they're worth. This is, um, again, having not read the rules in quite a while, I forget exactly what each of these does. Card art's very similar on them, but what's important is the iconography, which I think is pretty clear and easy to see. It's it's definitely more form over function here, or uh, function over form. Not that they're bad looking cards, but they're rather abstract looking cards. So you have the various different provinces or areas of the world, and then you have various resource types. Over here, again, very icon filled cards. They work. There's nothing wrong with these cards. You don't need art on every card. It's definitely no terraforming Mars or anything. They definitely have a unified aesthetic. What I do like is these two card types are very easy to tell apart. Same with these. Very easy to tell apart cards. Lots of icons. Clear to see icons. Everything's large. Um, no text on the cards. So in one way, that's good because it's language independent, which is nice. But I gotta admit, I don't know what this means offhand. It'd be kind of nice to have a little, this means this, but I'm sure by playing once or twice, you would have picked it up. And finally, the last deck of cards. Evil caps, no, that looks terrible. Again, great iconography. These might be the end game scoring. I'm not sure, this has been too long. Card quality is decent. It's not amazing. Like these aren't the thickest cards I've ever had, but they have that linen finish. I don't know if you can see that in there, but they are slightly textured. All right, moving on to the tiny cards, or as I like to call them, Hobbit cards, the UN cards. See, those had the quick release package thing in it work. These should all be the same. No, not quite. All right, so you got, oh, okay, white and blue ones. These are all UN cards. These are all the things that uh, they want to see, the UN wants to see. Again, it's all about iconography with this game. So it's all about being able to see it from far away. I'll bring these up a little closer, actually. So you're seeing, you know, two requirements there, two different requirements there, and the different points at the bottom. And these should look similar, but require three different types. Again, all about the icons and be able to see them from across the board. And in that case, I think this succeeds great. 
And that would be it. That is the last component here in my copy of CO2 Second Chance. The Talavosterda Geochix dot, uh, what is it, dot something, dot IT. Uh, looks like there's going to be a nice spot for everything, which is cool. It's a lot of cardboard, though. You can see how much was sticking out there. I'm going to put this baggie back in. I got a bunch of stuff to punch. What I'll probably do is I'll toss the money underneath this because I obviously don't need it. I'm going to put this back on top. I'm going to throw these. I do dig these. These That's just a nice concept. I'd like to see more games do that. And the lid back on top. And again, this is not going to shut. That's because I haven't punched everything. If I punch everything and put it all in the proper slot. So that was what you get inside a box of CO2 Second Chance. Geochicks.it. Kickstarted. I think it kickstarted in 2017. Delivered in 2018. And yes, it took me till 2020 to finally open it up. Hey, it happens. At Tabletop Bellhop, we are all about the new hotness from about three years ago. It's pretty much on brand. Uh, so that's it. Um, I, I about two hours to play for one to four players is what it's claiming. I remember it being longer, but it is a heavier game. It's one of those games where the more you play it, the more you're going to learn to play and be faster at it. Very impressed by the components I saw in there. A ton of wood, especially when compared to the original, the non-second chance version, where everything was cardboard chits. Very impressive looking. Everything in there looked good. I'm um, looking forward to finally getting this to the table and playing. Personally, I'm not looking forward to the co-op. Like, I am. I want to try it. But I want to play the competitive mode. And I am slightly disappointed that the, the default is co-op. So, we'll see. Maybe it'll wow me over. But that has nothing to do with what's inside. I just showed you what's inside. You can make your own decision if those look like cool enough components to you. And eventually, once I do play it, I will get up a gameplay review. That you'll be able to find at tabletopbellhop.com. Uh, speaking of tabletopbellhop.com, head over there to see answers to other people's gaming questions, reviews, unboxings, actual plays, and lots of other cool gaming stuff, including a list of every tabletop podcast I could find, and every tabletop streamer I could find, and every tabletop YouTuber I could find. You'll see those under master list, just under our logo. If you happen to have one of those things, a stream, a YouTube channel, or whatever, and you're not on my list, send me an email, mo at tabletopbellhop.com. Other than that, we do have a Patreon. It was just updated at the time of the recording of this video. We just added a whole bunch of really cool backer levels. So head over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and consider tipping your bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I'm Mo. Good night and game on.